Hi guys, this is Katja with Creative Image Studio. Remember this little mailable mini album that I showed you a couple of weeks ago? I created it with Prima Marketing's Amelia Rose collection. And I asked you if you would like a tutorial and if so, leave a comment. You guys left a lot of comments asking for a tutorial. So here we go. This is the video that I will uh, give you the free video tutorial for that Mailable Mini album. And in order to do the tutorial, I of course had to make a second one and this is it. I made it with a different paper collection as you can see. This is by Stamperia, one of my new favorite collections and it is called Imagine. I used three sheets of double-sided design paper, two and a half actually, and some cardstock. That's it. So a nice little mailable mini album. Let's first look at uh, it, uh, its outside and its inside up close and then go on to the tutorial. Have fun! So this is the front, magnetized closure. You know this from the previous design. Now, I didn't do much on the inside except matting. Of course, I'm showcasing the paper, but also this is really meant as a mini album. So um, I'm assuming that this will be filled up with pictures. So I didn't do uh, anything to it. Then the other side. Now here I did some uh, ephemera. So I cut a tag. This is a die cut from double sided paper. And here I will write my personal message. Uh, this will be sort of a welcome home message with a little bit of an explanation that this is meant as a mini album. And this is the uh, tea bag that I folded myself from some printed design paper. So this is a tip for you guys. Um, I wanted this tea bag to be of a thin sort of paper, so like printer paper. So I actually printed the design onto a, a normal piece of printer paper using a Crealis die cut to uh, to do this. They have a tea bag die cut, but you can also fold this yourself, of course. And then I added a fussy cut label as a closure piece, and then I filled it up with some tea. Like that. And then I cut a pocket from the design paper pattern here, so I can tuck all of these things behind it like that and then of course the two middle pages here and the center pages are held together by a booklet that can hold four extra pictures like this so here you have the inside papers now if you remove these ephemera this leaves room for an extra picture so you tuck the picture behind it you can glue it down or leave it uh, removable so this leaves you room for uh, six pictures plus the four that this booklet will offer you or you can do some journaling here but you can also fill it up with four extra pictures if you use the outsides as well or you can do two and then uh, enjoy the cover because I did choose some design paper pieces with nice art sentiments this is a really a lovely paper, guys. Imagine by Stamperia. And I stickled the spine here with some Distress Stickles by Tim Holtz. So there is the mini album that is also mailable. So holding 10 pictures, same design as my Emilia Rose version. And because many of you asked for a tutorial, I am giving you a tutorial next. So check it out, guys, my free video tutorial for you guys on how to create this cutie. So you take a 12 by 12 inch sheet of cardstock and first you cut it down to eight inch and a quarter. So eight and a quarter inch, which is about 21 centimeters. Now, because my cardstock is very sturdy, I prefer a roller trimmer or like this. 
so that is it so you cut it down now you turn your paper and you cut it to 11 inches and 1 8 which is 28.3 centimeters so that's actually just a strip that you cut off so now you have eight and a quarter by 11 and 1 8 of an inch which i'm guessing is almost u.s letter size so you could use u.s letter and then adjust after you have watched this video. As it is, I am doing 1 11, 11 and 1 eighth of an inch by 8 and a quarter of an inch. So you're gonna score on the first on the 11 and 1 eighth of an inch side, and you're gonna score at 5 3 eighths. With this thicker, kind of cardstock I always score three sometimes four times to get a sharp fold so five and three eighths and then ten and three quarters so like that now you're going to turn your page 90 degrees and you're going to score at four inches and you're going to score all the way so four inches all the way down and then at four and a quarter of an inch so now you have this score pattern here now you're going to take some scissors you can um, take a, uh, a paper trimmer so a, a, a paper knife a craft knife and uh, and cut it but um, i prefer scissors they are uh, easier to handle. Now you're going to take a bone folder and fold on the score lines. So uh, let's do the glue strip first. I always fold on the bump. And let's fold on the other side as well. I'm having some difficulty because my nail my nails are too long actually <laughs> to uh, do it as quickly as I'm used to. But uh, just fast forward. Okay, so let's sharpen these folds. Burnish, burnish, burnish. Meanwhile, I'm trying to be straight with all of these folds sharpening them now let's add some double-sided tape to the glue strip here now my glue strip is three-eighths of an inch and my tape is a quarter of an inch so i will be cutting off the excess in a moment burnishing so i'm just going to cut it flush against or alongside the tape and then i'm going to taper the corners next part you could do with some double-sided tape as well but I always like some wriggle room, so I am going to use some wet glue, but that is up to you. If you want to use tape, you are going to place some tape exactly onto this uh, gusset here. But since I am working with wet glue, the first thing I am going to do is remove this tape backing here. And now I'm going to put some wet glue here and also here on the inside of the flap. Well, although that is not necessary actually. So now I'm going to close this piece.
I'm going to try to be precise about it. It's like closing a pocket, but with a gusset, gusset in the middle here. And now I'm going to sharpen these folds again, because you're never entirely straight with these things. There are some minor discrepancies, so you will have to burnish all of these folds again. And then you can feel the resistance in your paper here and there, so just flatten it out. Use brute force and force that paper, bend it to your will. Well, or not, <laughs> just depending on the, how resisting it is actually. So mine has an actual rebel streak. But I'm doing fine. So this is the first part of your project. So now you have these two pocket pages here with a gusset in the middle. And this is a quarter inch gusset. Now you are going to uh, create a second layer to create your front and back covers. Just use the same cardstock and cut it to size. And you're also going to cut the, uh, the double matte booklet that also functions as a, as a closure. So let's start with that one. I already cut that to size. Its size is five and one eighth of an inch here and seven five eighths of an inch here. So five and one eighth of an inch by seven five eighths of an inch, which is 13 centimeters by 19.3. So 13 by 19.3 centimeters. And let's score it. And you're gonna score at three and three quarters of an inch. and then one eighth of an inch next to that. So three and seven eighths of an inch. So very small gusset. And then you're gonna fold on the score lines, both of them. And hopefully your nails are shorter than mine, so you will be much quicker about it than I am. So there you go, and that will fit right into this booklet here. Like that, see? Now you will add some bulk to that because you're gonna mat everything. So it will probably stick out a little bit once it's done, so like this. So now let's cut the cover piece. So here is the cover piece and that measures nine and three quarters of an inch by five and three eighths of an inch or 13.7 centimeters by 24.8 centimeters. But always double check with these things, especially when you have scored. So here we have scored and folded everything. So we scored at five and three eighths of an inch, as you may remember. So 13.7 centimeters. But when I measure this now, it is 13.6. So one millimeter shorter, which is one twenty-fourth of an inch, a inch shorter. So let's say a hair, a sliver. So uh, either you don't care that your cover sticks out a little bit or you're cut it at exactly that size, which is what I have done. So in this particular case, with remeasuring, I decided to cut it at 13.6 centimeters instead of 13.7. But it's up to you. You could have left it as is. Check out the scoreboard again. Score at four and a quarter of an inch. 
and again at four and a half. I see I am, am I doing it wrong? Oh, I see what I've done wrong. I scored all right, but I cut a, a, a full inch uh, too much. So it shouldn't be nine and three quarters, but eight and three quarters of an inch your paper. Sorry about that. So this, uh, these, uh, these two should be halves symmetrical. So both should be four and a quarter of an inch, which takes you to eight and three quarters of an inch. So I am gonna cut that to size right now. All right, here, here we are. So eight and three quarters, which is 22.2 centimeters. Fold on the score lines and you will have your quarter inch gusset that you need for the cover. Again with the nails. Let's do a dry fit. Perfect. So you can see that it sticks out a little bit here, but like I said, once you have matted everything, this inside matte piece here, photo matte piece, will stick out a bit, so your covers will now still be able to uh, to neatly cover that little bit of excess. Now there's a closure piece to be made as well, but we will do that after we've matted everything. Before we're going to mat, you first have to glue this booklet into its cover. So again, you could use double-sided tape. Me, I'm going with the wet glue again. First off, because of the wriggle room that gives me, but also because I have experimented with this, um, I find that in the long run, so in many years of use uh, of these albums, that the wet glue is strongest. So your uh, dry adhes adhesives, like double-sided tape, um, they will, well, they might dry out and then your album falls apart after a couple of years. With, with wet glue, that chance is a lot uh, smaller. I'm not saying it's never going to happen, but uh, wet glue will last your projects much longer. So stronger and more flexible when you uh, put everything together. So the wriggle room. Now this is a lot more glue than I actually need. So let's thin that out a bit. That is a disadvantage with wet glue. You always get dirty, smudgy, but I still prefer it to the dry adhesives. So let's fold it into the cover and press firmly. Check if everything is lined out and it is. Now I need to uh, open this up to be able to uh, burnish and get a good stick. Now be careful, but that, because there is some real room, so be careful not to press your, uh, or push your, uh, your gussets from each other. So you, they have to remain straight, which I think I have done. See, so it's, nice and straight on both sides. So now I have the basis for my booklet. It hasn't dried enough, so I'm gonna be careful about it and not open it all the way here because this has to uh, dry. Otherwise I might tear it apart again so I'm going to wait. I'm going to leave it and let it dry for a couple of hours. So again, the reason that I do that, if I want to fold this all the way open and this one as well, I'm going to tear this open because it's not dry yet. Same goes here. So I'm going to leave it and dry. And when it's dry, then I can manipulate it any way I want. Meanwhile, while this dries, I am adding some distress stickles to the spine of the inside booklet. 
You can use distress stickles or any glitter glue that you like, maybe even some liquid pearl, because I have to wait for the other thing to dry, so I might as well add something that I have to wait for as well. And the reason I'm doing this is because I find a 1 8 inch uh, spine is so small that I don't know how to cut. Well, I, don't, I do know how, but I find it a, very tedious to work with very small slivers of design paper to mat this spine with paper. So usually I just uh, use some glitter glue or some distress stickles be generous with it. So this will have to dry a long time because I'm very generous with it. Very thick layer. So I think I may even leave this overnight to be on a safe side. But then you get a great effect. You can uh, see this um, with my original design as well, which I'm putting in frame right now. And you can see that it uh, has some distress stickling as well. So there you go. I'm letting both of these dry. Now this one, I think if it uh, if it uh, if you leave it for one hour, that will be enough. This one with the very thick layer of stickles, I'm going to leave overnight. So uh, yeah, see you when I have cut all the mats. All right. So I've waited a couple of hours. So now I'm gently reinforcing this fold and now it's really glued down it's it's completely dried so now i can use my bone folder to train the paper to really open up so all right now it's time to get the design paper now what I'm going to do is measure everything and then cut the mats uh, to size. I won't film that because you know how to do that. And if you don't, I have a free video tutorial on how to mat. So I explain everything there. So check that out if you've never matted anything before. But I just wanted to show you the beautiful papers that I have chosen for this project. These are by Stemperia. And these are from their Imagine collection beautiful papers it's sort of an art theme so i chose three of those i think i'm going to use this as a cut apart uh, sheet mostly to fussy cut some things but they are all double-sided so look at these lovely colors these soft colors a bit vintage like beautiful so i haven't bought the entire collection because frankly it has a lot of these faces and though they are beautiful i'm not really sure um, how to use them in a project so i decided to uh, to buy just a couple of sheets and only one with a face and i i can use it uh, right now because the project that we are creating today um, mine is going to a friend of mine that really is into arts and crafts so i think she will appreciate this and uh, this will go uh, on the cover of our little booklet. But um, me personally, I wouldn't know what to do with the with the face on every page. But uh, if you do uh, have lovely ideas for that, then uh, by all means, check out this Imagine Collection by Stamperia. I'm not sponsored, guys. I, I'm just a genuine fan of, uh, of this brand. This is one of my uh, new favorite brands since the... Uh, well, let's do a detour, a little rabbit, tra rabbit trail here. I used to be a great fan of uh, Prima Marketing and Graphic 45 and uh, Kaiser Craft and Bo Bunny. Those were my favorites, but uh, the last couple of years they seem to have changed all of their graphic designers, all of these brands. Uh, and their, their newest collections, they're not doing it for me anymore. Which is a shame, really, because I was a big fan. But it led me to uh, go and explore this uh, 
this arts and crafts world and I found myself some great new brands. Stamperia is one of those. I will show you the others that I found. I bought these uh, fairly recently. This is one of their latest collections. Well, last season's uh, collections at least. So uh, imagine by Stamperia, check it out. And now I am going to cut into them and mat my project. All right, so I've matted almost everything except the front here. So I matted the inside. And I cut this uh, piece of the pattern loose so you can tuck a picture behind it or a note or something. This is the back. And this is the booklet that will go inside. So matted everything. And don't forget the uh, spine here on the outside and also on the inside. Now, before I will glue down this front cover piece, I will have to do the closure first, or at least prepare it because it is a magnetized closure and a magnet has to go underneath this mat. Now you can measure everything uh, if you want. You can, uh, you can take measurements and then make a closure. Me, I am more of a person to uh, check out her scraps and then take what I can use and then eyeball everything. So what I did here is I chose this piece of patterned paper because I thought that was, this was nice here with the, with the poem here or the quote. So I cut that to a size that I liked on the front, so like this. Put it on a piece of cardstock, rounded the corners. And now what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna show you a, a trick of the trade here. So like I said, you can measure everything, which is perfectly fine, but sometimes you're not in the mood or you don't have to, like now. So what I'm gonna do is because I need two score lines to form a little spine and the spine has to be a quarter inch because my booklet is a quarter inch. Okay, so I'm gonna put this here. So I'm gonna decide where I want the first score line to be. So that would be right about here and score. So it doesn't really matter the exact measurements because I'm just choosing a comfortable place here and I'm eyeballing the placement of the score line because I want it to be close to the cardstock. But now I am going to measure a quarter inch, so here, for the second score line. So I can fold this in a minute. Now I have done my cutting, prepared it already. So this is a smaller piece for the spine. And then this is the last piece. Let me see, yeah. So this is in fact one continuous pattern. So check it out if I put these against each other. Then you can see that is actually one piece of design paper. So I just cut it into three pieces and uh, now I can glue them down. Now you can of course see that this does not fit this, but that is on purpose. So let me glue it down. I have to make sure not to be upside down here. So there you go. And because I'm using wet glue, I have a wriggle room so I can place it and then adjust. And remove the excess glue because I always seem to use too much glue. So there you go. So this is the spine. And now I'm going to add the last piece. So all done. Now all I have to do is cut this off. So I haven't taken any measurements. I just went with the piece of design paper that I chose. And again, I'm eyeballing this and it's all done. So there's a beautiful fit here, as you can see. And now I can fold on the score lines and get myself a pretty little spine. 
I will need some inside pieces as well. So I went ahead and cut these already. Now I can glue the spine piece down if I want to right now. But this piece, you will have to wait a bit. So let me glue down the spine because I can see myself losing this amidst all of my uh, stuff. My nails are definitely too long, guys. And of course, I glued it down upside down. I tire myself, you guys. Okay, double check. <laughs> like this and then like this. This mess is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm very careful with burnishing this because the wet glue excess will peek out and I will remove it. So now you need two small magnets. Mine are from uh, AliExpress. They are thin, so thin is the, uh, the key. Thin and strong. So put this aside before you accidentally glue it down. And also prepare the back of the closure with some double-sided tape. So I'm gonna do that first before I'm gonna play around with the magnets. And I'm gonna be very generous with my tape here because I want a very good stick. Burnishing the tape. Now to place the magnet, I want a ribbon pull to go along with my closure here. So I will have to leave some room here for the ribbon and place my magnet well enough away from the edge of the paper. And I'm gonna eyeball the center. Okay, now with my nails, this is gonna be a challenge. If you have normal fingers like everyone else, then this should not be a problem. Just take the magnet and place it onto your tape here. Okay. So there you go. And then reinforce with some double-sided tape. And keep away from the edges here because you will have to mat this. And now for the ribbon closure. So let's go ahead and attach a piece of ribbon. And again, center it as best as you can. Now again, I'm gonna eyeball this. So just without measuring anything, And I am going to start off by removing this double-sided tape here. Now, if your uh, ribbon has two sides, so a matte side and a shiny side like mine, then place the shiny side on the tape. Cut another piece of double-sided tape. Place it on top of the ribbon. and then make a loop. So don't fold it, just bend it. And me and my nails. But you can do this easily. And of course I'm crooked. Darn it. That is better. And for a final piece of tape to reinforce that ribbon, So this is the outside of your, sorry, the inside of your closure. So now I can mat this, but first remove the double-sided tape. The tape backings, I mean. Take your mat and then mat it. Now, since I am using wet glue and wet glue doesn't stick very well on this ribbon, 
I have prepared my mat with a piece of double-sided tape here to go over this ribbon. So there's another one of my secrets, my trade secrets, as it were, my crafty secrets. And then adding the wet glue. Now I'm going to use the uh, wriggle room that the um, wet glue gives me and start my placement here because the wet glue is there. And when I'm satisfied, only then will I stick it down in its entirety. And the double-sided tape here covers that ribbon brilliantly. It's a good stick, it's perfect. So now this is your closure piece. So it will fold around your booklet like this and it is magnetized. Now for the second magnet, let it find its place on top of the first, like that. It will find its place. Now, because this doesn't have its own adhesive, I'm going to have to uh, attach the closure uh, first and then add a dot of wet glue, press it down, open it up again. It will still be here, but then you will have the the imprint of the glue here and then put some tape. That is how I do it. Now I will eyeball this, the placement of this closure, but you could measure it out if you want to be very precise and be exactly in the middle, in the center. But uh, I'm gonna eyeball it a little bit. So like this. And you have to make sure that the fold here, this fold, um, is not uh, behind the booklet here. So it can actually fold around this booklet. So again, eyeballing it, place it to my satisfaction, flush against that fold line, pressing it down. You see, I didn't take any measurements. And of course, I'm not exactly in the center, but that's okay. So, like I said, drop of wet glue. Well, I could use the wet glue, of course, that I'm constantly using. So I barely touched it with some glue. And I am just going to kiss the front of this booklet with that wet glue here. See? So now the wet glue is here. I don't know if that shows, but I can see it and that's the point. Before it has dried completely, I am going to place a piece of double-sided tape exactly on that spot. Now I'm going to close it again. And now your magnet will stick and you are going to reinforce it. And then you can finally mat your front. See, now everything is matted and your closure works. So now you can decorate your booklet all you want. You can go all out on the outside or keep it flat if you want to send it through the mail, like me. Also, you can go on the inside and either fill it up with pictures or glue down some pieces of cardstock uh, or some other embellishment that keep it flat. Uh, fill it up with sentiments or, or lyrics. Um, me, I'm going to add a tea bag because this is going to my friend Krista, who always gets some tea from me uh, over the mail every time she uh, comes home from a holiday, from a vacation. And uh, yeah, you can decorate as you please. So that was the tutorial. And we're back. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and create a lot of these to your own liking with your own personal tastes and styles and decorations and uh, show me some pictures if you like or link me the videos of the projects that you create 
uh, with this tutorial. Press the like if you liked this tutorial, if you appreciated it. Leave a comment below and tell me what you uh, thought, what you thought was helpful or what you uh, missed in the tutorial. And tell me uh, what you thought of the paper line. I, uh, like I said, I have uh, discovered some new favorite brands. Stamperia is one of them. And uh, I'm curious as to how you think about that. And if you have the same feelings about the uh, the traditional brands that I uh, named, so Graphic 45, Casecraft, Bow Bunny, Prima Marketing, and their uh, change up of new uh, graphic designers. Do you like them? Uh, don't you like them? Just uh, let me know, guys. Let's talk and share our thoughts uh, on the subject that we love the most. Okay, guys, uh, thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye bye.